This is the Haynes 32 sedan. Now they make these up in Norfolk in the UK. And in fact, there are two versions of this. This is a sedan. There's also an offshore version and that has a planing hull and bigger engines. So you can take that one offshore and have more speed. But this is designed much more for river cruising. So it's small engines, barking dogs and a bow thruster just down here and you can see as well it's got the long keel and that makes it really good for directional stability when you're cruising at the low speeds that you do on rivers because typically the speed limit on rivers like this is about sort of four or five miles an hour so that means the boat tracks really well you're not having to soar away at the wheel to keep it pointing in a straight line also you'll notice that on this one there is a stern thruster and that's actually built into the keel down there and the other thing you get with a long keel is protection for the propeller so if you happen to touch bottom on a shallow part of the river, you're not going to do any damage to either your propeller or indeed your rudder, which is hung on the back there. Anyway, let's head on board. They're an interesting boat, these. They're built by a, quite a small company. And because of that, they're really open to customization. So they can do quite a lot of changes to these and build them how you like them, which is always nice. And they are very much hand built. So we'll step on here. This particular boat is a 2019, so it's two years old. And you can see actually, despite that, it looks absolutely brand new. It's in really good condition. We've got the cockpit here. These canopies will all come off. What also is quite neat is there's a roll back section on the roof here. So this closes across. You can bring these canopies down like this and close this whole area or open it as much as you like. So take all the canopies out, roll the roof back. And this is a very open section. But one thing I really like about this, it's so clever, is the doors. Because you often see these sorts of glass doors on boats like this but normally they just slide and you end up with one section then of course with all three doors on this one it's a bit different because you can open this and that clips back there and now you've got access into the cabin but check this out that one then will slide like that and pop out of there and then this one that's left same deal Drop it across like that. Out it comes. And back it goes. And in fact, there's a little clip there we can drop down then just to hold them firmly in place. And that means that this whole area is completely open. There's no doorway in the way at all. I think that is brilliant, a really nice touch. And the other thing you have here is this seat because you can see at the minute it's for sitting around this table for dining or relaxing or whatever you want to do. But what you can do with this is just simply drop the backrest that way and now you've got seating out. It's a great place to sit because you're in the shelter of the saloon area but your view now is out across the water. I think that's brilliant. Now on the interior on these there's different wood finishes. This is the light oak so it's the lightest wood finish. There's also a walnut and there's also a cherry if you prefer. A couple of other things you've got in here. This I rather like. You've got a little bar area in here and this is typical of Haynes. What they do is they ask you what your favourite tipples are and they actually make the cutouts to exactly fit the drinks that you want to have in there. It's that kind of personal customization. And on this one, for example, the guy who owns this, or the couple that own this, I should say, it's a couple that have this one, I believe, they want to do more cooking on the boat than normal. So they've asked for extra refrigeration and cooking facilities, which is why you wouldn't normally have it. But this one has got another fridge area up here. There is a fridge in the galley as well. And you'll see also there's a microwave added. So that's the kind of thing, really, when you get these boats, when you buy them new, they will pretty much build them how you like in terms of little areas of customization. These are drawers, of course, all the way down here. I'm talking too much to <laughs> describe what they are. And then storage in there. And then your helm is here. Now, this is a freestanding seat because it's designed for river use. And it's great because it's on a telescopic leg. You can drop that down and make that into more seating. If you have the offshore version, of course, that is on a pole then. So that's absolutely rigid and fixed. Clearly, that would be no good if you're out at sea. And then the helm itself is here. There's opening windows on both sides. So you can get plenty of air through here. There's also a big hatch on the roof, which I'm not going to open because you can see it's got water on it. It's been raining in the night. So I think we'll leave that closed for now. But you can see how that all opens up. And then there's another fixed skylight behind it. And there are blinds that come across here. So if you pull it that way, we get a fly screen. And if we pull it the other way, then we get a night blind. And that is particularly useful because this area will convert into a double bed. So if you want to sleep some more people on the boat, you can do just by converting this. Another thing I want to show you, in fact, while we're in this area is down here, because this is the 
switch panel, so we distribution panel for your electrics and that kind of thing, is down here. But look at this. Um, main battery isolators as well, incidentally. Oh, well, this will pick it up. That is the build plate for the boat, and it actually tells you the team that have built it. So that's the actual guys that have put your boat together. I think that's a really nice touch. And another interesting thing that this boat has, it has got diesel-fired central heating, but it's a, what they call a hydronic system. That's this over here. What that means, as well as blowing warm air, which is what the Everspacker system normally does, it also heats your water. Now, that does two things. Firstly, it allows you to have a heated towel rail in the bathroom, which is rather nice, but also it means that it heats the water system. Now, the water system normally heats off the shore power if you're plugged into a marina or off the engine when you're going along. But if you're moored up on a riverbank somewhere and you haven't got access to shore power and you don't want to run your engine with the heating on, you've got hot water. So that's a neat trick. Bow and stern thruster here. Engine control is over here. And then this is just your speed and your depth and your water temperature. No chart plotter on this one. Obviously, you could fit it if you wanted to, but on the river, it's basically go up the river or go down the river. So much less relevant than this. You just have a, a chart on the boat just to let you know what's around the next quarter. We'll head down here. This is the galley area. Now, this again is an area that's been slightly customised on this one because you wouldn't normally have the built-in microwave. This guy specified it as well as storage in and around the back of here. You can see that this is for plates stacked up in there. And then around here, you've got things like the fridge is down here. And you've got that for your cutlery and more storage then tucked away in places like this. And then underneath the floor, this is just access. If you open that one up to systems, that one there, for example, I think I'm right in saying is the transducer for the echo sounder. And you also get to other bits and pieces in there as well, as you can see. That's part of the heating system, I think. And then those hinges there, those are just because there's a bit more storage tucked away in there. So let's head on forward. This then is the owner's cabin, really nice size. Double bed in the center, very nicely finished, the way they've done all this around the headboard and so on. And in here you've got hanging lockers, so that's actually illuminated in there. And if you wonder what these fellows are, those are the infill cushions to go on the table for if you want to make the saloon into extra sleeping. Reading lights up at the head of the bed. Again, you've got these hatches up above. Both of these open, so you can get a load of ventilation in here. And again, you've got the blind that pulls across like so. And Venetian blinds on the side windows as well. That one there is another hanging locker. And then you've also got drawers under the bed, so they're a pretty decent size. Like so. And then the last thing we've got down here on the lower deck is the toilet. Or the heads, we should say. Actually, what is quite neat is they've done this with double doors. And they'll be very neatly done so that when they're open, that lines up perfectly with that. And that comes over here and doesn't overflow this. And it means you've got maximum space. If you had just a single door, you know, it'd be out here or it'd be over there. But you maximise the width without having these doors out into this area too much. Heads is in here. That's that heated tower rail that I mentioned that runs off of that hydro hydronic system, I think it's called. And then you've got the shower in here as well. There's a curtain that pulls around so you need to get everything wet. And then that is just a blind that drops down if you want it. And if we swivel that, voila, as they say in France. Bit of storage underneath. And that's the buttons for the flush for the loo. And also that one there, I think I'm right in saying, is the holding tank gauge. So you can see how much you have in your holding tank and whether it's emptying that pumps out. I think with the deck fitting, if I remember rightly. Cool, that is that. I'll look back down from here. Oh, very nice indeed. Let's head on back. We'll have a look around the deck and then we'll take a look at the engine. So, put the old shoes back on. It's a nice area that though, isn't it? That works well. Let's go up this way. You've got steps up onto the side deck. Now what they do with this quite deliberately is they don't bring the rails all the way back. And that's because on a river, you're often having to hop on and off the side if you're going to a lock, for example, or against a dock. 
it means you don't have to scramble over the rail. There is this big handrail here, of course, so that makes it nice and safe as you walk around. And then that is that sliding roof that I mentioned with that bit of water that I'm <laughs> rather afraid to open the roof in case we end up with it all inside. Wipers up here on the front, decent size. And then if we come right up onto the bow, those are those hatches above that forward cabin. And then you've got an anchor winch up on the front here. So that's underneath there. And the anchor hanging over the front stainless steel on this boat, which is rather nice. So there we go. If you've not seen it, that's the brand new Haynes 36. That's the bigger sister to this one. So I've got a tour of that on the channel. If it's not there already, it's coming soon. So check that one out. So back down here, that I think I'm right in saying is the pump out for that loo. So there are places in the river where you can go and put a socket into there and get rid of the nasties. Okay, let's head on back. And there are two things to show you back here. One is the lazarette that's underneath the floor of the cockpit. Like so. So you've got spare cushions in there. And you can keep fenders and warps and whatever else you want to keep. You can live down in there. And then the engines are under the floor here. Now what you do to get to the engines is you move and roll the carpet up and lift it out. And there are panels that lift up, which is quite difficult one-handed holding a GoPro, very easy if you've got two hands or if you've got a video editing. Here we go. So there are three engine options on this boat and this in fact is the largest one. It's a Nanny N465 and it's 59 horsepower and that's giving the boat about eight knots which is great if you're somewhere where there's a bit of tide and you need to be able to punch the tide and get a bit more speed out of it and you cruise there for probably normally at about six knots. But there's also a 40 horsepower and a 47 horsepower, and those are for areas perhaps like Northrop Broads where there isn't any tide. The speed limit is about four knots anyway, and you just want to poodle along at a boat that's designed to cruise at those sorts of speeds, sort of four or five knots, with the smallest engine. In fact, the top speed is six knots, so that gives you an idea. Now, if you go for the offshore version with a planing hull, you can go up to twin engines at 220 horsepower each, and that is pushing the performance then up to over 20 knots. So it depends how you're using the boat. This is very much configured for inland use, or maybe estuaries, as I say, if you want to go out to sea and have more speed, the offshore is the version to go for. It's all very simple. It's a cable control to the throttle and the gear shift. In fact, you can see the cables there, gearbox in the back, and then the prop shaft. So it's all very easy to get at. You can get these panels up as well. I've left them in, so I've got somewhere to stand. But um, for engine checks, obviously, you just take out the centre one. If you want to do more work on it, then you take the rest of the panels out and you can get all the way around it. So that's the mechanicals. Let's put that back together with a bit more magical video editing. And that then is about it. Let's kind of sit back here. And I will say huge thanks to Val Wyatt Marine. They're the dealers for these up in the River Thames. They've organised this tour for me. And huge thanks as ever to you guys for watching. Hope you've enjoyed that one. Let me know what you think. And we we'll look forward to catching you on another one very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.